Hi everyone, welcome to my channel and welcome back. I'm Jeannie and I had every intention of showing you some nail art stamping in today's video, but as soon as I had these dips on my fingers, I could not bring myself to do it. So I've got the A Little Bit of Grace Trio from Vivid Clam Co. And the simplicity and the beauty of these dips, they just stood on their own. So let me show you these colors really quickly. And then I'm gonna show you how I do my hand filing. So I'm not gonna use an e-file in today's video. So I wanna show you my hand filing routine and to show you that you can do dip powder nails without having to use an e-file. Getting into my dipping process, I'm gonna be using the Vivid Glam Co glue. So this is the dip base, and this is what adheres the dip powder to your nails. So I'm gonna apply one thin, even layer to my nails. So I usually start with a brush around the middle point of my nail. I brush down towards the free edge, and then I push up towards my cuticle line. And that helps prevent flooding because when your brush first comes out of the bottle, it has the most amount of liquid. So I want it towards the free edge. And then once I have that on, I'm going to dip my finger into the dip powder. And then I also have this precision tool and I'm going to clean around my cuticle line just in case I get any product on my skin. I want to make sure to clean that up while my dip base is still wet because if you do get product on your skin, that could cause lifting. So this dip right here is called A Little Bit of Grace and it is just so beautiful. It's kind of like a sage greenish grayish color, but it does have like this beautiful shimmer in it. And I, I, I don't even know how to describe it. You just, ha it's something you have to see in person. Different dip liquids have different dry times, but I find that the Vivid Glam Co glue has about a medium dry time, which is like the perfect timing for me. So by the time I'm done with my first layer on however many fingers I wanna do, it's dry enough to where I can dust off the excess powder. So I went ahead and dusted off the excess powder off camera. So now I'm going in with my second layer and I normally do two layers of color and then a layer of clear. So that's what I'm gonna do here. So I'm applying a thin even layer of dip base and then I am going to dip into the color and then of course clean up my cuticle area because you want to make sure you don't have any product on your skin and then I will do the same thing for my pinky as well. I find these liquids are on the thinner side, which is my preference. So what works perfectly for me is the three layers total, the two of color and one in clear, but it's really a matter of personal preference. If you want your dip powder nails to last a little bit longer, if you want them a little bit thicker, like if you find that they're cracking, it could be they're too thin, you could do additional layers. It's really just a matter of preference on what you want to do. The next dip I'm gonna be using is called Leather, and this name is literally so perfect. I know it looks like a little lighter in the jar, but once the top coat is on, it deepens up and it looks darker and it just looks like leather. And I don't know what is up with me lately, but I have been gravitating towards browns lately and I have never liked browns. I've always been told my whole life that brown was a really good color for me, that I look really good in earthy tones, but I've always been like a colorful person. Like I always loved color, which I didn't like brown because of that reason. Cause to me, it was very kind of drab I guess I don't know if drab is the right word because I don't want to make it sound bad because I know a lot of people do like browns but lately I have been gravitating towards them and I don't know what is up with that does anyone else find that doing your own nails kind of opens up your color palette and you wear colors that you wouldn't normally wear before I mean having said that I'm wearing brown on my nails I'm really loving it I still don't know if I'd wear brown clothes but the fact that I'm loving brown on my nails is a big thing for me. 
So now I'm curious, drop down below in the comments what your least favorite color is. And if you do do that, I challenge you to start wearing that color and see if it grows on you. It may just be a matter of finding the right tone of that color or maybe even the right finish. Maybe it's a glitter that makes you love it or a flaky or a glow or a thermal, whatever it may be, you may find that you start loving that color. I find that your nails are a pretty harmless place to kind of experiment with colors, play around, and that's what peel base is for as well. So if you don't end up liking a color, you can just pop it off immediately and move on to something you like. So I find it fairly easy. And I, you know, for me, similarly, like makeup, I rarely wear makeup. Most days I don't have anything on. I may have like a little bit of mascara, maybe some lip color, but otherwise that's really all on a daily basis. But for me, like my lipstick, I love lipstick. I love all different types of colors. I like bold and neutral. The one color I don't wear is brown, not surprising, but I like to go bold with my lipstick. But when it comes to like my eye color, when I wear eyeshadows, they have to be neutral. Like I don't like going bold on my eyeshadow. So it's really about finding your comfort zone. While I was rambling, I went ahead and started dipping in lace and this glitter is just so beautiful. It's one of those you have to see in person. So it's a mixture of fine and medium white glitters and they are matte white glitters. And there's also like, I'm not sure how to describe it. They're kind of like a pearly white glitters, but these are super easy to work with and so beautiful. And I don't know what it is about them. They ombre so beautifully. So I'll end up doing a little bit of an ombre on my pinky, but I almost wish I did more fingers just because of how easy and how beautiful this glitter is. I went ahead and capped everything in clear and activated and waited a full two minutes and now that my dip powder is hardened I'm going to go in and show you my filing process only using a hand file and these dips were super easy to use and smooth so I only need a hand file I don't have to use an e-file an e-file is just a matter of personal preference so the first file I'm going to use is my absolute favorite because it is so skinny I buy a big pack of these off of Amazon, which I'll leave the link down below in the description, 
option for you if you want to pick these up but i love them because they fit in the little crevices and they help me get really cu clean cuticle lines and sidewalls because it kind of just fits right in there so i always start off by cleaning up my cuticle line and my sidewalls using this hand file and you may also notice that I am using a dust collector to catch my dust when I file. So whenever I'm using a hand file, e-file, it doesn't matter. I always grab for my dust collector and I highly recommend that you grab one as well. You don't have to use this specific one, but when you're filing, so much dust gets everywhere. It gets all over your room, it gets in your lungs. So the dust collector really helps cut that down. And you know, you definitely don't wanna be breathing in all that dust. So I have my Phantom Pro dust collector from iGel Beauty. I've had it for, I don't know, what, two years or so. And I love this thing. It has never failed me. Once I finish cleaning up my cuticle area and sidewalls, I like to use a regular 100-180 grit hand file, and this is from Amazon as well. And this is the McCart brand that I pick up a pack of these. These are my favorite to use. And you can see they're a bit thicker, so they don't really work very well for cleaning up the cuticle area, which is why I use that first file in the beginning. So I'm just using the 180 side because I want a finer side. I don't need any, a coarse grit like the 100 grit file side and I'm just going to smooth out the surface of my nails make sure everything's even and I also want to contour so I want to make sure that it's kind of a smooth transition from my cuticle line to my nail I don't want it just to be like a hump at my cuticle line I want it to look very natural so that's where a little bit of contouring happens and as well as I want to clean up my shape so right now I'm wearing my short square sharp tips from Vivid Glam Co. And I wanna make sure that my free edge stays nice and crisp. I love the sharp free edge of these tips because they're very clean and very crisp. So I wanna make sure they stay that way. So I kind of go back and forth of, I'll do a little bit of contouring on the surface of my nail, and then I will work on my shape a little bit because I find one affects the other. So as I take down some bulk with my contouring, it'll impact my shape. So I wanna go back and clean up the shape a little bit more. So I find doing a little back and forth is what works best for me to make sure that I get my nails to look how I want it. I typically wear an almond shape, but I don't know why. I have been loving the short squares lately, but obviously filing is a lot different. So filing an almond shape is different than filing a square shape or even a coffin shape. So both for coffin and square, you wanna make sure that you have a straight and crisp free edge. And I find that's what I challenge, I have the most challenge with is straight because I have some crooked fingers. So what I learned is to file perpendicularly to my free edge. So what I did there is I pointed my nail up and I filed perpendicularly to the nail and that ensures I have a straight, even free edge. And that has been a total game changer for me learning how to do that because I used to just file parallel to my free edge and it would always end up still crooked. So definitely give that a try if you're working on getting a crisp straight free edge if you're working on square nails or even coffin nails. I'm going to speed this up a little bit and finish filing and then I'll be back.
The last thing I like to use is a glass cuticle pusher and this one is from Bonafide Beauty and I swear by this. They are my favorite brand for glass nail files and cuticle pushers. So for this, I like to use the little sharp end of the cuticle pusher and go through my cuticle line and sidewalls and help clean that up for anywhere the file missed. So the, you'll find like there's a lot of stuff in there that you don't realize and I think this is really great for cleaning up the area. So I like to just go around my nail and just make sure I've got everything nice and cleaned up. And for some reason it looks like I'm being really rough in the video but I swear I am not digging because I don't want to ruin my tips or accidentally lift my dip powder because I am wearing peel base. So I'm just gently going around and cleaning things up. Now that I'm all cleaned up, it's time for a dip top coat. So in order for your dip top coat to dry, you do need a layer of activator. So I'm going to apply one final layer of activator to all my nails. It just has to be a thin layer. And then I'm gonna wait a full two minutes for my activator to dry before I go in with my dip top coat. If I go in sooner than two minutes, I could risk contaminating my dip top coat and hardening my brush. So I wanna make sure that I'm waiting that full two minutes. And then once that full two minutes is up, I'm going to apply my dip top coat in two to three really quick swipes on each nail. Between each nail, I'm going to wipe my brush on a lint-free wipe in case there's any excess activator. And then I'm gonna return my brush to the bottle, get more top coat, and go on to the next nail. Once I'm done with all five nails, they should be dry enough to where I can go in with my second layer and you'll know it's ready because it'll start looking a little dull and wrinkly. So for your second coat, that's when you can take more strokes, make sure you're capping your free edge. I still like to, out of habit, wipe my brush on a lint-free wipe. You don't technically have to, but I think it's better safe than sorry. And then once you're done with your second layer, it should dry in about like two to three minutes fairly quickly and you will get a beautiful top coat shine. I absolutely love the Vivid Glam Co. Dip Top Coat. As always, I'm gonna finish off my mani by rehydrating my cuticles. And this is one of the new duos by Scales of Mermaid. This is in the scent Breather. And it's a very light, citrusy, fruity type scent. There's something very like relaxing and calming about it. So I'm using the cuticle balm, but I have a feeling this scent is gonna be my new nighttime routine scent, just because there's something really just light and relaxing and calming about this scent. I use self-care now, but I think this one may be my new go-to. And here we are with the finished look. What do you think? There is something about this trio that you have to see in person to truly appreciate its beauty. I mean, I saw the pictures and I thought it was pretty, but I had no idea how much I would love these until I got them on. 
and I feel like these colors would work for any skin tone and they would look great on anyone. And I know I don't typically show my filing routine, so let me know if that's something you enjoyed seeing, if that was helpful at all. And of course, you know, if it was helpful, when I go back to my almond shape, I can also show you that because obviously the shaping of an almond is going to be different than what I did for shaping my square. So just let me know what you want to see. So I hope this video was helpful. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, I'd appreciate it if you gave this video a thumbs up. It lets me know to continue creating content like this. And it also helps YouTube recommend me to others, which helps grow my channel. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. I upload content every Monday and Thursday at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. As always, I appreciate you being here. Thank you so much for watching. And I will see you in the next one. Bye. Thank you.